Hi everyone, welcome back to RC Pie. If you've not subscribed, please do so. Um, it does help me. Let's try and get those subscribers up to a thousand. I might even give away a free gift or something. Um, today we're going to be having a look at my first bit of footage, my first run with this new camera that I've got, a little action camera. Nice cheap one I picked up on Amazon. I'll put a link below. Um, just wanted to have a go really and see what we can do. Uh, I played around quite a lot and struggled a bit with coming up with a way of mounting this. Um, I was wondering whether to mount it to this or whether to mount it to the MN999. Um, quite fancied mounting it to that, but I don't want to screw anything into anything. I don't want to ruin anything. Um, so I've been playing around with different ways of mounting for the last few days and finally decided that I would go with magnets or I wanted to try magnets. So the magnets arrived and what I've done, I've put um, five magnets behind the windscreen and stuck five magnets to the bracket on this action camera. So it's not actually attached to the body shell permanently. So it won't do any damage to the body shell, it shouldn't compromise it. Um, and it should still be as solid as if it was screwed on. Uh, and that will hopefully mean I can move it between different cars as well. Uh, so, well, we'll just see what it's like. Um, let's have a look at the footage. Now this camera has got several different recording settings. This is all done in 1080p, uh, 60 frames per second, and I am using the, the built-in image stabilization. Uh, it's, you know, it's not doing too badly. I think it's all right, as long as it's at relatively low speed, then this, this doesn't seem too bad. I mean, we are getting quite a bit of body roll because you've got that added weight. Uh, what I probably need to do is stiffen the springs if you've got the camera strapped onto the top of the car. Um, but you know, this was just the, the first trial. Very interested to see what it would be like. Quality and setup. So that was just bombing down a quite a steep little track. Um, one of the things I was very, very conscious of whilst I was out driving was not tipping over to the front. Uh, you know, crawl is generally a setup with a bit of a forward weight bias, so better going uphill. Once you get going downhill, you often have a few dodgy moments. There we go, the hill wasn't too bad apart from those times. Uh, yeah, so downhill, uh, before, just before this footage started, I actually already rolled it over forwards, trying to get down a steep little track. Um, and I learnt a few things early on, like here. Oh dear. That was just what would be a little jump normally, but I went over there and just the landing just threw that camera off the magnets. Um, it was a bit of a, a bit of a shock because uh, you think the magnets are quite strong, but then all of a sudden you realise they're not quite that strong. Uh, so all I've done now is I've I've also put a little bit of um, tape holding the magnets onto the inside of the screen, just you know, not to not to give a, a stronger connection for the camera because that release perhaps isn't a bad thing. Um, but it just means that if the camera does come off, the magnets stay stuck to the body. So this little spot that I've gone to, uh, it's actually the site of an old stone mine. It's not too far from where I live. Um, so I thought I'd have a little look at how it does inside, uh, how it does with the light. I've had a little, little drive here just at the entrance previously. So I thought I'd just head in and check out the light bar that I put on the rescuer as well. So there we go, that's turned on. Unfortunately, quite a bit of the light is blocked out by the camera. Um, 
I thought, you know, a bit of fun. Let's see what's what. Disappointingly, this stone mine is absolutely full of litter. Uh, it seems to be a bit of a hangout spot for some of the local young people. Um, questionable choice in beverages and so on that they've so kindly left all the litter in here. And I think we can see that um, Kirsty there has got very imaginative artistic skills as well and clearly wants to remain anonymous. But yeah, it was, it was a bit of fun in here. Quite tricky, some big lumps of rock. If it was out in the open, it would have made for some quite interesting footage actually, but most of it was quite hard to see. So I've just cut to all the sections that are near one of the entrances and get a bit more light. Actually, it's not been too badly, but the the major issue here and the, the first piece of learning, I suppose, is to make sure that the the mount for the camera is fastened in properly. Because as you can see, now we've got half a screen full of car bonnet or hood, uh, and that's not good. So I had to keep stopping, just moving it up a bit, realigning it so that we could see where we're going. So there was quite a bit of video that you just couldn't see anything. Another thing that I found quite interesting on this test run is the, the sound, the way the sound's recorded. Because the camera is locked in its own little box, it's only really picking up the sound of the car, you know, because those vibrations are travelling through that protective case. And anything else, so wind noise, it's absent, um, and even any talking that is nearby. You know, if you if you're walking with the car, talking, none of that is being picked up whatsoever. That definitely means that going trailing with a few people, you know, or just doing your recording whilst you're walking with a friend or with family makes it a lot more relaxing because you're not worrying about what anybody's saying because it's not going to get picked up on the recording. So that is quite nice. And you just get you know, the car's point of view from sound, from a sound point of view as well. So overall that's, that's quite a good thing. So we can see this sort of speed, it's actually doing okay. You know, the, the coverage isn't bad at all. Um, and as long as it's not too rocky, too bumpy, I think it's okay. I think it takes in those bumps quite well. It's just when it's that sort of pebbly size or even just a gravel makes the vibrations a bit too nasty. What I have wondered is if you can get any sort of a little gimbal to attach to the front of the car because it'd kind of be quite nice to to be able to see how the car is rotating you know how it's, how it's sitting in a different plane to the to the ground rather than the camera constantly turning yeah you know, we can generally work it out if you've got trees around then it's it's pretty easy to see what sort of slope you're on but I don't know, it's just a thought. A gimbal might be quite nice, although I'd probably struggle to find one that's low enough profile. Because that is the issue. That's the main issue with mounting a camera. Seemingly everybody's decided to adopt the design of the GoPro waterproof camera box. And I think that's a shame, because it leaves your camera sitting really high above your mounting point. And we all want it to be as low as possible, you know, to get that driver's idea. I also don't understand why these camera manufacturers think that we all need a protective waterproof box that's that's fit for going diving. You know, generally you just want to keep a splash off your camera and that's about it. So could we please have a lower profile little mount so that we can just stick that camera onto your car and not have 
giant box there, which also doubles the weight, if not more. And that's a shame because that's clearly affected the handling of your vehicle as well. But maybe that's something for us as a RC car community to, to look at, see whether we can do something about it. Perhaps there's a different part of the RC world, maybe the RC planes and helicopters and drones have got better solutions to this and better systems. Don't know. I've just kind of, initially, I've just gone for the, the cheapest, what I thought would be the easiest, to see if this is an avenue that I'd like to explore further. And so far, you know, I think this could be fairly good. Certainly if you're trailing another vehicle as well, I think that's where the where the key is going to be. So you get in that kind of convoy, adventure sort of look. I think that could be quite nice. Because once you can just about tell something like that is like a, on a slope and a, a tricky lip to get up, you don't really get that whole feel. You want to be seeing that suspension moving over bumps and over funny terrain. I think that's where you really appreciate seeing these crawlers working. So, yeah, I think more than one vehicle is the real answer for these videos for the future. One other thing that I'm going to have a look at is time-lapse shooting. Now, I know that this camera has got a time-lapse option, but I've not looked at what the settings can be, you know, for the interval between taking the different frames. Um, but that might be quite fun to have a little go at. Uh, I've watched one quite interesting video with a mixture of normal recording and um, time-lapse recording from RCTNT. Um, if you've not watched his channel, if you've not checked out the videos, have a look at RCTNT. He does some great stuff. Um, one of my favourite channels to watch. And he's got a bit of first-person camera work on there as well. So, see what you think. Overall, though, I think this is, you know, a kind of measured success for our first run. We've got that problem of the, of the camera slipping down. Um, I think we need to consider the speed of the vehicle a bit more in future, uh, whether there's something that could be done to cushion that bumping, or maybe a different frame rate would help. Uh, maybe the image stabilisation would be better with a different frame rate, not quite sure. But, you know, not too bad thus far. Now we're going up this last slope to get out of the area where this stone mine is. Um, we're about to come to the, the route that I told you about that we fell down just before recording started. That's it. It's quite a big step. No chance of getting up there. So I'll lift up and off we go again. Watch out for the bike coming the other way. And off we go onto the open land. Much better light up here, so I thought it might be interesting to have a bit of recording up here. And the other thing I thought might be interesting is to change up into second gear. So now we're in second gear, giving it a bit of a hammering. You certainly get the feeling of speed, but I'm not sure it's so pleasant to watch. Rattling. I don't know. It might be better, it might be more interesting on more varied terrain. Don't know. I thought I'd give it a little run on the grass as well. Not as rattly, which is nice. But you're not getting any of that detail really. It's I mean, this is the crawler world, and oh, there's me. I'm not sure this is what most of us want to be watching videos of crawlers for anyway. Just a bit of an experiment. And then a long drive all the way back to the car. So, I don't know, let me know what you think. 
let me know which bits you think work, which bits really don't work, any ideas or advice, if you've tried any first person camera work on your RC car yourself, give me some thoughts and hopefully we can come up with some good videos in the future, uh, it might be a nice way of reviewing cars, showing them in action, let's see.